The natural response to extreme affliction or grief is to give up. We're seeing suicide at record highs where people just can't face life any longer and they're giving up on God and they're giving up on themselves. But in time of affliction, God does not give up on us. And if God hasn't given up on you, you cannot give up on him. You've got to go forward. You've got to keep going. The spirit of God gives you the strength to keep going. Naturally, you can't do it. But by the power of God, you can make it through any situation. As always, thank you so much for tuning in to the Sanctuary Sunday School. I am so glad to have you here. We are into season three. I even did a live session, which I'll do more. Thank you so much for tuning in and for encouraging me. And you will see so much more to come. So make sure that you are subscribed and tap that bell so that you don't miss anything. This week's subject is faithfulness during grief. And we see here, this is the story of Hannah. And when the lesson opens, it says that they were at Shiloh. And Shiloh is where the temple or the tabernacle was located. And she was there with her husband, Elkanah, and they were worshiping the Lord. And I thought that this was significant right here in the very first sentence, because even though Hannah was, was distressed, she was grieved, she still worshiped. She was still there in the temple. And that's something that is so important that during times of distress, we don't just uh, wallow in self-pity and turn away from God. And that's sometimes what the enemy wants us to do. He wants to distract us from how good God is and how merciful and just that he is. And he wants us to be broken down and in despair. But I love the fact that Hannah still had enough fortitude to be in the temple and she was in that temple and she was praying to the Lord because she was barren and she didn't have a child. And, you know, there were other women there who were taunting her for that. And as we've been talking about in either this lesson or the other lessons, we've been talking about the women who were barren and what that meant. And, you know, when I was studying this lesson, I thought about me because at the time that my daughter was born, I was 30 years old. And prior to that, I remember being at church on Mother's Day and and hating that because all of the people would be there. The, the people, my peers, they all had children and, you know, everybody would go with their children and I would be the only one standing there childless, childless. And I've never even shared how I felt before, but I feel like somebody needs to hear this. And I would just feel so sad and, and to the extent that. I didn't even want to go to church on Mother's Day, even though I have a wonderful mother and I was celebrating my mother. I was kind of really depressed um, because I was not a mother. So I can really identify with how Hannah felt. And just I'm going to cut this really short. I asked God specifically for a child by the time that I was 30 years old. And I actually conceived my daughter at 29 years old and she was born two weeks after my 30th birthday. And even today, we're seeing so much with women who are barren and and having issues conceiving and infertility and all of the things. And that is something God has not forgotten you. He's still with you and he still hears you. And I encourage you to remain faithful. Don't give up. Don't be depressed. Don't stop because God sees you. And so we see that Hannah was here and she was in the temple and she was praying and she was deeply grieved and she just poured out her spirit to the Lord and the Lord heard her. And that's another point right there, because when you present a life to God. God will hear you. And I love that even in her distress, Hannah knew what to do and she knew who to go to. See, sometimes we go to our friends and we go to our families. We go to people who are actually worse off than we are and really can't offer any real support or any real sound advice. But Hannah went to the temple and she went straight to the Lord and she began to pray and she poured out her spirit to the Lord and asked God for this child. And she also went as far as to make a vow. She said, Lord, if you just give me this child, I will give this child back to you. I will not allow a razor to cut his head, to touch his head. I won't cut his hair. And that is indicative of what's known as the Nazarite vow, very similar to the one that Samson had. And she vowed this over her unborn son. 
Not only did she vow this over her unborn son, she made this vow over a son that she had not even conceived yet. Think about how powerful that is. You know, sometimes we go into prayer and we're begging God for something, right? But we're not willing to make a sacrifice. We're not willing to give up anything. You know, in my church or in most churches, we have the practice of when a child is born that we have a christening where you give the child back to God. And I think sometimes parents don't understand how serious that is. You're making a commitment and a vow to raise that child in the fear of the Lord and to maintain a holy environment for that child to be raised up in when you have those Christians. And we see that Hannah, she dedicated this child back to the Lord that she had not even conceived yet. And it says that Eli, Eli was the priest at that time and he was overseeing the affairs of the tabernacle and he came in and he saw her and it says that Hannah was praying and her lips were moving, but her, there was nothing coming out of her mouth. And that right there just was a really good message to me because sometimes you've got to talk to God. There are times when you've got to talk to only God, because when when God places a desire down in you and I say this all the time, God is the creator. No one knows your heart better than God. No one understands and feels the desire of your heart more than God. So don't be afraid to just pour your heart out to God. Hannah said, I just, I just poured out my heart to God and, and I gave it all to God. And so she was there and Eli, Eli walked up to her and he said, what you doing drunk? How long are you going to be drunk? And she said, oh, I'm not drunk. I've been in this temple praying because like I said, he saw her moving her lips and nothing was coming out. And I, I would assume that that looked kind of weird. So she told him, she told him that she didn't tell her what she prayed for. She did not tell Eli the vow that she made. She just told him that she had poured out her spirit to the Lord and that she was in distress. And Eli, I love the way that he handled this. He didn't go into a long dissertation. He didn't ask her her business. He didn't ask her about all that. He just said, okay, yeah, whatever. What you've been praying for, it's done. Go back and go in peace. And it says that she left and she was able to enjoy and eat and she was happy and she was no longer sad. God loves you. He does not want you to be sad. It is not God's desire for you to be in distress or to grieve. He is a God of comfort. He is a God of deliverance, but you have to go to him and you have to give it to him. Put your all on the altar. It doesn't matter what it is that is vexing your spirit or what it is that is worrying you. God cares for you. Always know that no matter what the situation is, God cares for you and he has the power to turn it around. But you've got to give, you've got to give it to him. You've got to go to him and you've got to cry out to the Lord like never before. We are living in times where we have to cry out to God. There are times when you've got to close the door. You've got to walk away from your friends. Maybe sometimes even your spouse. You've got to go to God and tell God there's a song that we sing. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. You always have access. Jesus Christ came to give us access to the father and we can walk boldly before the throne of grace and request what it is that we want. So when you surrender all, God will do that. And see, like I said, God is faithful. He's right there with you, even in grief. God is right there with you. He has not turned his back on you. Even in your saddest times, even in the worst of times, God is there. He has not turned his back on you. He has not given up on you. So you cannot allow grief or distress or affliction to allow you to turn your back on God. God is faithful to you in grief and you need to be faithful to God in grief. And I guarantee that whatever it is, he will walk you through it. He will carry you through it. He will bless you through it. He will lift you up and he will make your heart be able to smile again. It says this and look at this. Hannah had not even conceived yet. But once the prophet, the priest of God spoke to her, it says she was no longer sad. See, we've got to learn to have some joy even before we get what we want. We've got to accept it and walk in it before it's manifested because that's how we get to the manifestation. If you stop and if you give up and if you're broken down and if you're weak and you're frustrated before it comes to pass, it's not going to come to pass. You've got to give it to God. You've got to believe God. You've got to stay faithful and keep going just like God is faithful to us. We've got to be faithful to God even in grief. 
If you are interested in partnering with the Sanctuary Sunday School, you can go to www.thesanctuary.academy. A few weeks ago, I asked for a thousand people to commit to $7 a month. Many of you have started making those donations and it has already made a huge difference, but we still have a few slots and we need a little bit more. I am determined to share the word of God with millions of people around the world. And we have a responsibility as Christians, as children of God to spread the word and get as many people saved as we possibly can. I am committed to doing that and I need your help. We are starting a whole new set of videos. You will see more videos coming up. At this point, my demographic is right around between 40 and 60 years old. I am targeting millennials with my XYZ and Beyond initiative. You will see cartoons for children. Yes, I have hired an animator and an illustrator to break this word down for our babies. And I also have different things that I'm working with young people who are going to be live on sets in the studio, breaking this word down for our young people. The word of God is for everybody. The great commission is that we go and we teach all nations. And that is what we're doing here at the Sanctuary Academy. We're expanding outside of the Sunday school lesson. We're going to do just inspirational words to get, th get you through the day. My goal is that everybody can get what they need. I have partners who are pastors. I have Sunday school superintendents. I have missionaries. I have everybody. You can be a lay person, whomever you are, if you want to sow into this ministry. And there will be opportunities for you to come on camera with me. We're doing different things with the, I love the internet because we can bring you in via different social networks, Hangouts or Skype or whatever it is that we decide to use so that I can share with you and we can get your ministry in there because some of you send me such amazing stories and I want to start sharing the stories and some of the testimonials about the impact that we're making. And I am so grateful for those of you who are partnering with me. And if you're watching this and you feel compelled, it doesn't have to be $7, it's whatever you have. You may have enough money to just, just pay for all of it. We'll, we'll, we'll welcome that as well. But we do not want you to miss out on the opportunity to help spread the word of God because it is so important. And I am so committed to this and I am so grateful for this opportunity to share. And I am grateful for all of you. So go to the website, www.thesanctuary.academy and partner with us today.